the mating advisor is a pedigree-based mating program to mate a, you know, an individual animal based on their sire stack. So the user can enter a sire stack for a female like a heifer or something and do a pedigree-based mating with his bull list for that specific pedigree and it can be used to reduce inbreeding. So let's see how this works. Let's say we were looking for a million daughters. So this time I searched for a NAB code for a million, which you can should be able to search for names or NAB codes. So we'll click on his name there and we, we'll say that the grand dam here was um, Shottle and we'll find Shottle by typing in his NAB code and we'll use Durham for the grand dam. We can set some information here. We can set an inbreeding percent of, of four that uses the three generations to calculate an inbreeding as a percent. So I've done that here and we get some evaluations based on that sire stack from our bull list. And we can see the Dayton bull here has a mating index calculated of 100. He does have an inbreeding of 3.1, so there's some inbreeding there. And then we can see we have some other choices here that don't have any inbreeding that's calculated in three generations. So this is a program that can be used in order to do a, a heifer mating based on a sire stack, you know, where we don't have any information or don't have a file to load in the particular information on that female. But we want to move on here quickly to our multi-mate portion of the program, which is the second portion of main portion of the program which can be used to, to mate cows in a particular herd using the bulls selected during sire selection. If it's the first time the program has been used, you'll be prompted to um, enter herd information. Um, if the second time, you, your herd, last herd you use will automatically come up. If we, I'm going to click on herd info here and you can see you can have a multiple list of herds. This um, is my list of 30-some herds that I work with here on the program. Some of them are examples, some of them are real herds that we um, that I run some matings for. Um, there's also the ability if you have, you're using, you know, a heifer herd and a cow herd, you can move cows from one to the other within those two files. But we're going to create a new herd here. So we'll click on new herd and we'll call it webinar and we'll have that herd as number 31 here. And if we go to cow data, we'll see there's nothing loaded here in for the cows since we haven't put that information in for this new herd yet. But there's a couple different ways we can get that. We can manually enter information here by, you know, we can enter information from the pedigrees right here and we can enter information from our classification sheet, but we can also import this information from, from files and we'll show you how to do that now. We can click on the import button and we'll get a question about do you want a flexible import for cow data. A flexible import is the ability to import information from a, a non-standard mating file. The, not a, we create mating files, that's, but you can also import information from a herd management software or any other source that you may have. Let's take a look at how the flexible import works here. There is the ability to make a setup where you select the traits that are in the file that you have that you can import. Um, you can see here, here the available traits that you can import from your file. You can also save a setup here, which I will bring up a save setup. And uh, there's a button here called preview where you can load up a particular file and see if it's set up um, correctly. Um, we'll find the file that we want to add to the program. Um, here we're looking for a comma separated file. We'll do that and we'll click open and you can see what we're going to import because we have cow ID and registration number and age and sire and dam and maternal grandsire. That's what's in the file and we can see that it's importing right as all those fields make sense. If we were actually importing this herd today, we'd hit import. It would do the same thing, not just with the first line like it showed you here on the preview. It would import all that information into the program. But let's exit out of there because we're going to pull up. Instead of that, we're going to go to import and we'll say no to the flexible import because we're going to use a file derived from the Holstein Association website. 
and then ask you if you want to overwrite the cows for the herd. In this case, since there's not any, it doesn't matter. If you had the same animals and wanted to add new data from a file, you would put yes. If you had additional cows to what were already in the program, we, we would answer no. So we'll click on yes, and we'll click the file that we're looking for, this .mat file, which is the extension for a Holstein mating file. And as we can see, we get information here on on females with linear information and you know pedigree information along with production and lactation information and we have cow IDs and bar names over here and we can click on another cow and look at additional information we also have a tab up here called herd data which shows the same information in a format where each cow is on an individual line it also has STA values rather than just linear values here so if we're going to do a genetic mating we can look at that information and we'll show you how to use that later it may be useful you know if we're look, talking about like genomic tested heifers that don't have classification scores but do have those STAs for the linear traits. Now there's a few different tabs here where we can set up how how the mating works. Under mating goals we have the area where we set our goals for the linear traits. Um, there's a default here, a breed average, there's a couple other defaults, high type and maximum value. We'll set that at maximum value, but the user can change any one of those numbers to whatever they're looking for. So if they're more focused on a particular trait, they can move that number up so that it's more likely to pick cows that are below that value. And then we can decide how many traits we're going to look at. The default is three. We can set the weight here. So we um, that means if an individual traits get selected, that's the weight that gets used in the final calculation of the mating index. Um, there's a couple of Faults here, economic and equal. We're looking at the economic weighting, and once again, the user can change that to whatever they want. There's also the production side here, which is grayed out, but it works very similar to the type side. It's grayed out because the percentages you can see down here, the default is 100% for type and zero for production. We can change that up to 40% for production, but since um, the general idea is that while sire selection is, is maybe best used for corrective selection for production, you know, corrective mating is best done on a type basis, so that's the default, but the user can change that and change their production goals and weights if they so desire. Under mating setup, we have a few different things that the user can adjust that impacts what they get on their mating results tab. Um, there's different types of mating, linear, which uses the linear scores for the cows, genetic, which uses those STAs we talked about, and pedigree, which uses the sire and the maternal grandsire and the great grandsire as um, a sire stack in order to create a mating based on that to avoid inbreeding and then figure out what that animal might need, usually used for heifers that don't have um, genomic information. We can include IIII and DMS in the calculation um, if the user is interested in that. We can choose the type of inbreeding that we want, um, inbreeding limitation that we want. Um, there's the maximum inbreeding percent, which sets a hard cap on the number that we're looking for, or optimized genetics, which calculates an inbreeding depression. And if the mating index is still higher, it'll go a little bit above our limitation. We'll set the maximum inbreeding percent here. Now, since this is three generations, it doesn't have some of the built-in inbreeding that all Holsteins may have, so our numbers are lower than some of what we normally talk about. But, I, you know, one th six two five is perhaps a little close, but that's generally kind of thought of as the standard where, um, for the three generations. But we'll put that at four here in, in, instead. There's a couple other things here where you can exclude genetic recessives, well, the default is not to do that, but if you have a double cross, it would avoid that if you chose, chose that. Haplotypes uh, impacting fertility, the same thing, except for their doubles are automatically excluded there unless the user were to take those out. And the user can decide whether to use calving ease bulls in their evaluations on, uh, for heifers or that sort of thing by entering calving ease information on the heifers and then selecting an, uh, a level for the bulls. Then down at the bottom, we can see the information that shows up on our mating results screen. So this is the default here. It has 
ID, barn name, traits, um, nabs, mating indexes, and inbreeding percent. But let's say we wanted short names on there as well, so we could click the three choices for short names and move those into whatever position we want. So we're going to move those up here. So you can do that however you want um, to, to be on your mating results when we get done with that. So moving on to the next tab, we have the semen restriction tab, which would where we decide what we want to do, what bulls we want to use, and how much semen we want to distribute among the herd. Here we need to load a bull list from sire selection, or we you can manually create a bull list or load a save bull list, but we're going to go back to sire selection real quickly and make a new list, and we're going to look at bulls with TPIs over 2,200 and run. We see we get six bulls. We'll bring up the report, make sure it's what we're looking for. Since it's there, it now appears in our multi-mate list here. Now, as I said, we can manually adjust this. so. As we look at this, we see we have both Mano Mano and his clone. We're probably not going to use both of those bulls. So we can go to manually select bulls down here, and we can take Mano Man and remove him from our list. Let's say there's a genomic young bull we just bought semen for that wasn't on our list because we just we didn't search for them. His name's Clark. Hitting CL, we get Clark. We can add him. And so we have Mano Man off the list and Clark added to the list. And we can save that and close it. And then we have those bulls here in our herd. Now we can select um, a semen restriction so we can put a restriction on the first mating or all the mating choices um, or none. So let's select all mating choices. Now we can pick an individual bull and put a certain amount on, on them, or we can pick multiple bulls by using our control button and highlighting them like this, and then we can go here and let's enter 15 and for the first choice and 25 and 25 for the second and third and save that. So it gets 15, 25, and 25 for all of those different choices. Um, under the mating order, there's the ability to change which order the herd is mated in. Um, it calculates there's a rough calculation on the best cow or the worst cow based on STA values or linear values. And you can choose best or worst first or just do, leave it at, at random. But since now we have a, a list of cows and a list of bulls, we can go to mating results and we can click the start button in order to do our, our mating here. And we get some additional buttons that come up here. And it'll show us here which by hitting process, it'll process an individual cow, and we can see which cow we're going to do next, what traits we're going to process here over on the left-hand side. We're going to do cow ID 607 here, you know, and we're going to be looking at these type traits for her, you know, utter depth, forward or attachment, foot angle. If we click process, we will get her um, mated as well. We can find a particular cow We'll find cow 38 and, and process that one so it does that even if it's not in the particular order. Or we can just go ahead and hit the process all button and do the whole herd. So it goes through and does the whole herd. Um, we can sort this list in different ways. We can sort by the barn number. There's two different ways you can sort here. There's a numeric sort, so which is what we did by clicking on the white column header. So we sorted this by in numeric order. Or if we want to sort by name, see if we use the that, that column header doesn't work because it's a numeric sort. But the gray bar is an alpha sort and does the herd list in alphabetical order. So we can sort by you know cows, you know barn name or their HMID number. Now if we go to mating summary, we will see our average of the traits for the particular bulls we use, but we also see our semen order, so we see which bulls um, got used in our mating. It also shows up on our semen restriction tab, the same information. And you can see Freddie didn't get come up with a mating index high enough to be used in this particular mating setup, and Man O' Man 2 didn't get used very much. But let's just try something here. 
where we go through and change some of this information. Instead of maximum value here on the linear goals, we'll change this to breed average. And instead of economic, we'll go to equal for the weight. And let's add 40 percent in on production. So if we enter 40 there, it'll change that to 60. So we've got a 40 percent on production. And instead of a linear mating, let's do a genetic mating this time. And let's go back to mating results and we can hit start and we can process this all again and we're going to get a different set of results because we've set up um, a different area of focus and the user can you know work with that and see and get the information they want there's different results you can get based on what traits you're looking at the emphasis you put on them you know how what semen restriction you put on particular bulls and that sort of thing and once again same thing we can sort this information so we can look at it in a similar fashion we did before if we go back to the mating summary we can see that Freddie got used man oh man was not one of the more popular bulls in the list based on these new settings I think if we look Massey is the most popular bull here and he was in the middle under the last settings and we can do all kinds of different setups that would get us a different list and, and, and get one that any user um, could find um, useful for their herd. If we go back to the mating results here, there's a few things we can do on this screen. We can print the results. We can look at that here on the print preview. Um, we have a, you know, a printed form and if you print it out it'll look just like this with our choices it'll show whatever columns we had in on the on the main screen we can also export this information um, to be used to enter entered into a herd management software or a spreadsheet we can set export parameters you know whether we want a comma delimited file or some other delimiter whether we want a header line or whether we're exporting you know, directly into PC Dart, there's a format for that um, that ca that can be used. So we ex if we do that, we can export. We'll get a text file that has the information in it. In a in this case, a common delimited format with the fields that we have on here. The user can go to the mating setup and set up however they wanted to do that. <clears throat> like I said, there's a PC Dart. There's an actual format there where the user would want you know first and second nab codes is their only and cow IDs is their only areas and then and saying yes to the PC dart will add the column in differentiating cows from heifers so which is necessary for importing into the into the program and the other herd management softwares usually can import similar sort of things but the formats a little different or perhaps a little bit more flexible one more tab here that we have um, is the best matings tab and just to quickly go over what this does it's the reverse of the normal mating process if we have a particular bull and that we bought some semen on and we wanted to use that on the best cows from the herd list um, you know pick out the best mating index of the cows for the bulls rather than the other way around we can use this so let's say we had 10 straws of Clark semen and we wanted to see what best cows use it. We could do this. We could process the matings. It would calculate the mating index for all the cows in the herd and give us the 10 best results. So, you know, the user can um, mark cows as do not mate if they're not ready to be bred or whatever and have a list of cows that are going to be ready to mate soon and they can pick the best cows for a particular bull in a similar fashion um, to what they did before.